Insanely talented. She has this crazy stage presence about her, and her voice is just beautiful. I'm going to play the rest of that song at the end of the podcast. So, today we interviewed Rebecca Escobar. She's the cousin of fallen LAPD officer Phil Cuesta, and she also is the designer and the maker of Windows of the Begotten Blue. It's a handcrafted memorial that shows the lives of pretty much every single LAPD officer who has fallen in the line of duty. It was a very moving interview we did. She had some great perspectives. Um, and uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoy, guys. Thanks. Who was Phil Cuesta? Phil Cuesta. He had a big heart. He loved his family. He was the only child, and I think that when he started at LAPD, he gained a lot of brothers and sisters, and he was very close to everybody who he worked with. He had a lot of faith in God. And also, he was a kid at heart. He loved to play Nintendo. He loved music. He was someone that touched a lot of people's hearts. Sounds, um, sounds like an amazing guy. He was. So let me ask you something. What Do you know what his favorite... Nintendo game was? Nintendo? That I don't. No? Okay. I don't. Because <laughs> I grew up um, with Nintendo original NES, so. I don't know the his favorite game. Um, I do know about his music. He loved Rush. Really? Um, Very cool. Let me see. I'm trying to think. No, I don't. No worries. <laughs> Let me ask you something that I've been thinking about. So, back, you know, in the 90s, you know, internet wasn't really around like it is today. And now when an officer passes away, we, we all have this outlet of social media where we could post pictures, post our favorite memories, things like that. Um, so with, with how it used to be in that sense compared to today, um, how do you think that has that helped you? That you ha we all have this outlet and you see people remembering him years later? Or does that make you sadder? Do you wish you had this these platforms for your friends and stuff back then? You know, you, does that make sense? I think it's a great platform. Yeah. Um, a lot of my research that I did for the altar was through the Officer Down Memorial page. And... Reading through family, friends, co-workers, remarks, it lets them express their hurt, their feelings. Um, it helps them remember. And I think that that heals the heart. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. You know, till, till this day, I... I um, Every now and then I do go into the Officer Down Memorial page and there's people after 22 years that they continuously, it's, it's like um, a journal. Yeah. 
they're able to write down their feelings, how they're feeling, how right. they're missing them. And I, I just think it's having the internet, you know, and then when, when someone f- remembers yeah. someone that you knew, it's heartwarming. It's, it's really nice. I think it helps the individual also mm-hmm. know that somebody's listening to them in mm-hmm. their in their moments of sadness. And they would put something out. Somebody likes it. Okay, somebody's listening. Somebody read that. Somebody heard that. Mm-hmm. And that helps a lot. It does. Because the world can't... Some people say that social media has made individuals more lonely. Uh, I, I guess you could look at it you know, cup half empty, but I think the the glass is half full because like like we just said, you get a few likes and that's enough to bring somebody out of a moment of despair when you're remembering somebody, mm-hmm. you know? So I think that's great. But tell us about your altar. So y- your altar, you displayed it on many of our events. Yes, yes. Uh, our Inkton Honors, we had the... The, uh, the blues event for Nick Lee. We had our monthly um, dedications that you would bring them out partially because it you can't bring it all out because it's growing and growing, which is great. But exactly. tell us tell us what it is and how it started. Um, well, I have to bring bring into my culture. I've always uh, observed Dia de los Muertos. Okay. Right. And that is uh, an event where you honor the fallen. And for years, I've always wanted to make one just for Phil, for one person. But when I started researching and started finding out that how many officers are from LAPD, and I started reading everybody's replies and I started thinking, well, I'm going to make a bigger altar for all of the fallen officers from LAPD. Um, It took me 11 months to read all the replies from 200, and back then it was 206. And so it took me 11 months to read it. The reason I read it is because I wanted to know each officer individually. So when you say read it, there's an archive online? It's the officer down memorial page okay and you if went you, through if it. you look up if you look up one officer it'll, it'll give you the story of what happened and then it lets everyone make a comment right some people have 500 comments some people have 20 comments um and you went through every single 206 at the time yes LAPD officers. yes it took me 11 months and m- mind you i have a 40-hour job Right. So I did this on <laughs> on the side. It's a passion project. Um, and so I I read all of them because I wanted to know who they were. Um, so when you first started reading them, you were doing it more so you could be in touch yes. with it more than I'm going to build this altar for um, everybody. Well, I started with his Phil's was the first box. Yeah. But then when I started researching, and I'm like, wow, there's 206. I started reading them. And I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the altar for all. And so I just gathered information and um, started building the altar. Yeah. And have little um, trinkets. Right. Something that represents their life. If they like to go fishing. Right. If they like to drink Starbucks coffee. Like their precise drink. Yes, exactly. The little things that exactly. only their friends would know. Exactly. And I mean, if it wasn't for the friends and family and coworkers who wrote on the Officer Down Memorial page, I would not have an altar. It was them sharing their intimate details right, of nice. the relationship that they had. Very nice. So how many are you at now? So total right now, because since... 98, I believe there are more officers have died from. Oh, yes. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so how many are there now? Not how many have you made? How many fallen officers does LAPD have year to date? Uh, um, to date, I believe it's uh, two, 206. Oh, okay. Three were just added. So it's 
209, but this was before from officers from the 1800s. Oh, Those were got just it. recently added about within months. Got yeah. it. Got it. So I would say 209. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And how many of these um, memorials are made? Have you made? I ha- I have a total of, um, I believe it's 42 bo- um, boxes. Wow. Each, it, it's a window. It's a window that right. every window has two officers on there. I do have all their names, all 209 names on there. Um, I also recognize the, the officers that have um, died to suicide. Right. Um, I have nine, uh, I'm sorry, four canines also. Right, right. Um, but it has a little bit of everybody in there. It's it's continuously growing. If I find uh, a, a new detail, I'll add it to there. So it has basically everyone in there already. Uh, it might be a, a motorcycle. It might be. Do a, you want to add one window for each officer? Is that the, your goal? Because that would be a huge. Uh, <laughs> where are you going to keep that? No, at? I, yeah, I don't. I did have that goal in the beginning, but I don't think that will be because that would be, you know, 150 boxes. Right now, I have 42. And it's huge already. It's huge already. Yeah. So no, I'm. I'm. The windows share different officers. It was right. just meant for one, then it was meant for two, and now I'm adding little things that belong to other officers. That's good. And you, you've done this on your own time yes. with your own money. Yes. So I know we did a Halloween event that raised money f- to help you build it. I forget how much we raised. It was just a little bit, just enough to maybe add some things. Um, do you remember how much we raised? I believe it was $1,000. Yeah, it's 1000 bucks, And... What you what you add with a thousand bucks just for people that went to the Halloween party just so uh, they could know what what I've added they contributed six more boxes I I've added six more boxes nice. since then and I've added I would say like twenty trinkets that's awesome that I've gathered together yeah. so that and festive painted and yeah that everything. festive Halloween party we had raised money to to put six more boxes to this beautiful memorial oh yes yes definitely i appreciate it yes yeah i remember us talking about where are we going to keep it and uh i you know i hope one day we have a very nice office where we could display it for people Mm -hmm. because it's it's in your living room right now right and it's just (laughs) (laughs) so um but we'll, we'll get there i remember my i had a vision that I just kind of gave you on the text message. And that was, hey, if you could quit your day job and you could, because these are all handmade. Yes. Every single box slash windows handmade. Mm-hmm. If you could do this for every police department in the United States of America, that'd be, and funded. Everybody have their own handmade Rebecca Escobar or windows of the Begotten Blue. That would be awesome. I would love to do that. You know, that yes. would be awesome. That's a, a vision I had for your vision. Mm-hmm. But, you I, know. I do have the altar right now at my house. And, um. They talk too loud outside. It's, how would you say, um. See, after the first Dia de los Muertos event that I had, my, in my head, I was saying, I'm going to put it away and bring it out again in November. But right. when that day came, I could not put it away. Yeah. I said, these officers cannot be put away in a box. You know, I said, yeah. th- they need to be honored every day, 365 days a year. Yeah. So I do have it in my living room. And um, I would love to display it somewhere where people can see it yeah. every day. You know, because uh, it's I hope nobody takes that from us oh we could do it one day no no absolutely <laughs> i i gave you my word and yes that's right that's our goal <laughs> yes it's gonna happen yeah. rebecca yeah i promise because i i don't want to put it away and i still have it up and it means a lot yeah. it means a lot to me to not to just put it away to bring it out once a year no right it has to be out at view throughout right. the whole year and it's because of the way times are right now, it's a little harder just to have it 
at different events now. It's not the same, and and uh, but that that's not stopping you, and that's not stopping us from making events where we could show it to the world. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people do care about about this, about falling offshores, and these little things that people like you do, which is great. So we're we're gonna get it done, Rebecca. Thank you. I hope um, so. So I know you have some uh, your Bible. We called it your Bible. We spoke about it right in front of you. Um, just pretty much all your notes that you took while reading it. And I read through it. I leafed through it. And holy moly, it's detailed <laughs> with every single off. That That's a lot of passion and a lot of work. And that needs to be in a fireproof safe somewhere. <laughs> Not just in a Ziploc bag <laughs> on your counter, please. But tell us about what you have here. I'm gonna, I just jotted down some details just so that everybody knows what they helped me learn. You know, yeah. one of the officer's favorite drink from Starbucks was a white chocolate mocha with whipped cream. You know, one officer used to put Tabasco on his french fries. One officer's favorite dish was spaghetti and meatballs. And those are the things that made, helped me know the person, even though I didn't know them, even if they died in the 1800s, 1920, 1927. Um, Those little things just made it more personal for me. Um, When it came to the street signs, I drove to all the street signs around wow. LA wow. and and I took pictures of them. So when I stood there, it really took me in because it was personal. That's where the, where it happened. And um, usually, I mean, I would stay there and just moment of silence and honor them. So it's really, personal and it's it's hard n- to keep that separate um i'm trying to honor them but at the same time it's very emotionally draining of course um those 11 months that i was reading everything there'd be nights where i'd be crying just hearing the stories of you know a wife children left behind a son a daughter a cousin it's very emotional and all the basically I think my motto in the beginning was to humanize the bad we are all human and one thing that someone shared with me and um, you know when when you know someone that has been killed in the line of duty you go through so many emotions. The first is anger. The second is hurt. And the third that lasts a long time is why. Why did this happen, you know? And someone mentions these words to me and it it kind of helped me understand, but then in another way, it's a, it has a double meaning. Someone told me, you know, Rebecca, they didn't kill Phil. I'm just going to use that as, as an example. They didn't kill Phil. They killed a man in a uniform. And that made me think, okay, to the perpetrator... He did not kill, let's just say, um, Phil, Tom, or Jerry. They killed a man in a uniform. That's their perception, which it's true. They killed a uniform. But if you look at it in the family side, they did not kill a uniform. They did kill a brother, a sister, a husband, a dad so it it has a double meaning to both sides and it made me realize that my Christian beliefs tells me they killed a uniform it was not personal 
but my heart and my family side tells me it is personal. So that's, it, it kind of helped me to understand maybe um, there will never be an answer why. Why did this happen? But it made me see kind, kind of both sides. I think it's a powerful perspective to help fill the hole. Help fill the hole that might never be filled. Exactly. Exactly. It's nice. It's very nice. So we use the words never forget a lot. You 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 really dove in head first passionately and really went through the timeline and went back in history and put yourself there. I could tell from just the way you're describing it what you did. You you cried for people you didn't know on your own. Home alone didn't share it and and you you chose to do that. Or other people, whether you don't, whether you know it or not. I guess my question is, how does the meaning behind "never forget" evolve for you as time passes? So maybe when you heard that at first, "never forget," I'm never gonna forget. Promise, promise. And then time passes, time passes. How does the meaning of "never forget"? The, really change to take a different meaning for you or how you never forget personally because I grew up with the other los muertos their belief is that when you do forget they are gone and as long as you don't forget they will always be here so to me, never forget means a lot. You never forget. There, I mean, your life is, especially if you're close to them, you wake up every morning remembering they're not there or I'm, we're not talking on the phone. We're not, they're not there. So I think you, you never forget. Um, you may do other things, um, you know, your daily life schedule and everything, but deep down inside, every day you remember. And a lot of times you feel that other people have forgotten. But I think that's wrong to think because everyone is thinking about that person. There's not just one person thinking about that person. They touched a lot of th people's lives. So along, it's not just one person remembering. There's a lot of people remembering, you know, coworkers, friends, family. So never forget is, is two words that mean a lot to me. Because you, you never forget. Rebecca, since we first met, you were extremely sensitive, passionate, emotional, dedicated. That's all I know about you. And and very, you, you're shy to be on camera, so it's not like, look at me, look at me. You're a great person. And more people need to see this memorial and your work and your passion. And just want to say thank you for all that. And, and you will touch other people's lives, people that haven't seen the memorial yet. Memorial. And, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I hope to, you know, keep displaying it. That, that's, that's my goal. I'm, I'm very low-key. Um, I do this because I want to. I don't expect recognition. Um, I think I, I did that. Uh, I was like, no, we need to show this to everybody. <laughs> I, I want to show it to everybody. I just don't. I'm very low key. I'm very in the background. Okay, don't, don't tell me thank you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but um, one thing that I told myself when I started is 
I will never charge anyone right. to see it. Never. Yeah. And I will never say no right. to anyone. Because if somebody wants it set up somewhere, I will do it. If I am able to, right. I, I will do it. I'll find it. Yeah. find a way to do it um so as far as me ever you know i i'm just thankful that you give me this opportunity to set it up at an event and also spotlight wednesday i'm i'm grateful because i get to remember one officer every week right and i don't want to forget them whether it's 1932 or you know 1999 yeah i don't want to forget any either any of them you know thank you you're welcome keep doing what you're doing <laughs> i will